I'm here with middle infielder Bobby Haney of the San Jose Giants, who when he was with the University of South Carolina, won the College World Series, and he wrote a book about it <laughs> called From Kings Park to Omaha. And today we're gonna talk about his book. Okay, you can see yourself. Sweet, sweet. So, um, you wrote in the back of the book that your main reason for writing this was to share your story and to inspire kids to succeed in sports and in life. But how did you come up with the idea to write it in the first place? Um, well, did someone suggest it to you or did you think of it? Kind of. Uh, my coach uh, back home in Long Island, New York, he wrote a book about uh, a little boy who had a, uh, I think a disease and stuff like that. So, but he was involved in baseball and he always, he always inspired children. He was a big coach and uh, back home. But he inspired me to write the book because he wrote one as well. So it's mainly cool. the reason why. Cool. So what was the process you went through from like the inception of the idea to writing the book the actual writing of the book to getting it like edited and published and everything? Well, I really just jotted it down on my laptop, you know, and wrote all my ideas down, which is the easy part. Whatever comes out of my, whatever comes, whatever comes into my head, I just write it down on paper. And, you know, uh, to try to keep all the stories in my life clean for the little kids and everything like that. Um, yeah, just to, you know, write all my stuff down that I did throughout my, you know, my career in baseball and to inspire the young kids and uh, the World Series and the, uh, pretty much it, basically. So when did you start writing it? Did you start you start writing after, or did you kind of keep a journal while you were going? I wrote it right it? after we right after we came back from Omaha, like a month after we got back from uh -huh. Omaha after we won the World Series. Okay. I was just inspired by all the fans in, in South Carolina because it was just a it was an unbelievable experience to go through to cool. win the World Series. So. So how long did it take after you like wrote everything out? How long did it take you to write it all out? And then how did you get it published and everything? It took probably about two or three months to actually write down all the ideas, about you know thirty to forty thousand words. And then you gotta take about another month, month and a half to put it into, you know, specific chapters mm -hmm. and uh, you know, lay out the whole entire book and the templates and all that stuff. But yeah, self publishing definitely takes a lot longer than a regular publisher would. Okay, cool. So what was the most challenging part of writing the book for you? Most challenging part would probably be the editing. Trying mm -hmm. to find, you know, an editor and you know my family also working on it too. And yourself being the editor. You know, but that's probably that's probably the most main thing. Trying to limit the mistakes in the book. You know, <laughs> self-publish it. So, yeah. But yeah. That's probably the hardest part. Okay. What was the most fun part? The most fun part was just you know re re uh, rereading it over and over again, seeing seeing how it sounds and how my all the stories you know gelled together and all the experiences that I've been through and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just all the stories, all the special things that happen you know throughout baseball and stuff, and the funny stories too. You know. Yeah. Um, so what was the most unexpected thing that's happened to you as a result of writing the book? Like, do you, have you had people read it and like talk to you about it later or? Yeah, some people would, you know, buy the book and, you know, give it to their, give it to their spouse on Christmas Day to open up, you know, so people were opening up the book. My book that I wrote on, on, on Christmas morning for, <laughs> from a gift from their wife or their husband or whatever, so that was pretty inspiring. And the little kids, you know, wanted to give up on baseball, but, you know, read the book and, you know, wanted to get back into baseball after reading the story and stuff too, so I feel That's really cool. Yeah, I'm proud of that. I'm happy for that too. So happy for the kids too. So cool. So throughout the book, you name several supportive coaches, teammates, family, and friends who have helped you throughout your journey. Um, are there any coaches or teammates in the Giants organization who have particularly helped you? Yes, definitely. A lot of a lot of specific coaches. Um, I mean, all of them basically. With my, you know, with fielding, my swing, talking to me about the game and stuff. I got. I didn't know too many coaches. Um, when I wrote the book in the Giants organization because I started it a little earlier. Right. But um, yeah, but everybody's been inspiring to me, every single coach. I've, I'm sure I left people out of my book that I forgot, but everybody contributed. Cool. Um, have you ever thought of writing like a sequel to this book about your experience in the minor league? Um, like maybe if you win a championship here, if you make it to the majors or something? Yeah, definitely. If I was go to go to uh, big leagues or something, probably have a sequel. You know, that'd be fun for everybody to pick it, to pick the book back up again. Uh, make it definitely make it a little bit longer mm -hmm. and put some more stories in there. But uh, yeah, I think about that time to time. Okay. Um, so at the end of the book, you wrote about how surprised you were that in a lot of ways you actually had more luxuries playing baseball in college than in the pros. So now that you've like moved up a couple levels from rookie ball, um, has it gotten any better as you've moved up the chain, or is it still mostly the same? It's gotten a little bit better. Obviously, in college, you know, we only, we only go on the road probably, you know, 20, 20 games out of the year. So we get, you know, better hotels and stuff. But yes, things have gotten better as you go up through the levels of uh, baseball and stuff. The hotels get a little bit better. And I hear it gets better as well. So oh, yeah. Yeah. We're, uh, we're plugging away. Okay. Um, so have any other experiences in pro baseball surprised you since you've written it? 
Um, like positively or negatively? Positively, yeah, definitely. Kids of uh, people have, you know, noticed the book more and stuff like that. Um, kids, you know, kids, kids like it more because you know I play pro ball now, so they want to see how professional baseball player how he dealt with things and stuff. Sorry, what I meant was like, because in the end of your book, you wrote about how you were surprised when you came into pro baseball. Like it was, it wasn't what you expected. I guess, yeah, right? it's, yeah so, definitely a lot longer. The grind, it's a, it's a tremendous grind. The uh, road trips are longer, way longer, and you play every single day instead of you know three days a week, four days a week, <laughs> like in uh, like in college. So it's definitely a bigger, bigger grind and a bigger toll on your body. Okay. So, um, so you shared about a pretty funny rookie hazing incident when you first arrived at Instrux after signing. Um, so now that you've been in the system for a few years, do you get to be on the other end of that, giving it to the new guys? A little bit, yeah. Sometimes we try to try to give it to them a little bit. We got a. Uh, sometimes you can find the guys for like 25 cents or 50 cents. Sometimes for what they, the, the silly things they do, mm -hmm. we catch them in the act of doing things. But uh, I don't, I don't do it too much. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But we, we have a pretty good time. C can you share about like one of the best pranks you've pulled on someone or? Best pranks, I think we uh, we hid in top of the uh, on top of the cubbies in the bus. We hid in there, and then we told one of the rookies to go get like the go get a snack or a cookie out up top in the uh, in the cubby, and my, our buddies would be in there and jump out at them really quick and scare them. <laughs> nice. And then they get pretty scared. Nice. Okay, I have one last question. So right. last year you got to be part of the San Jose Giants making the playoffs. So besides the fact that you didn't end up going all the way, what were some of the similarities and differences between that and your experience at the University of South Carolina? Definitely different. I mean, uh, it's still great to make the playoffs, you know, mm -hmm. whenever, whenever level, but. You always want to win no matter where you're at. You know, you never want to be on a losing team, and stuff like that. It felt great. Even it's a long season, but you want to you want to be in the playoffs at the end. You know, you want to you want to have something to show for the long season. So, but uh, can you tell me about some of the specific like similarities or differences between like playing in college and the playoffs here? Same same pressure situation really. You just gotta get the job done and uh, and win. The organ when you win, the organization looks at that team, who's the winning team in the organization, and they really keep an eye on you. So it's great it's great to be a winner just everywhere you go, no matter how how good you're doing individually, you want to win as a team, whether you're in college or pro ball. So. Okay. Cool.